Right, welcome to the first show of 2015, show 138. Happy New Year! We have got a cracker for you for the start of the year. We're back to our ethos, playing anything that we like. Yeah. Even if it's shit, but we like it. Doesn't matter, you're getting it, man. You're getting it. Starting with this. I'm not saying that this yeah. is shit in any way form or anything. This is brilliant. This is uh, uh, Rasha and Roland Kirk and uh, from the album Blackness. And this is obviously an amazing version of Ain't No Sunshine. Yeah, you get some cracking covers with this. And this is a stunning album, stunning album. And not hard to get either. Um, so uh, it's got uh, a couple of wonderful covers on it as well. Uh, yeah, the version of what's going on is probably. I'd say it's better than Marvin Gaye's myself, but there you go. Yeah, this, um, Chris has had this on a comp already, he told me, I think, but he realised that he got this from our man down Barry Woods in that amazing pool that keeps on giving, so... It does. You know, it does. Every time we think we'll probably only get one out of it this week, no, 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 still this many coming all the time. But what a track, man. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. We've got the results of um, our Elf Spear Test this week, and oh. then so if you're, um, if you switch off after a couple of tracks, keep watching. Poor fella, struggled a little bit, so some of your guesses are way off. You know, uh, <coughs> the lucky winner uh, will announce later of the uh, brilliant artwork from the State of the Intent album. From our man, Mr. Crumb. Yeah, Mr. Crumb. And uh, we will be playing a track from the Statement of Intent album today. Yeah, of course, it's only right to talk about the artwork, so we should exactly. play one we haven't played of it before. Totally. Anyway, anyway so uh, let's go to a bit of uh, lovely Linda Lewis. Yeah, when me and Brad feel sultry, we slip on a bit of Linda Lewis and... Uh... And I pretend to be Linda. Are <laughs> <laughs> hey, you? Yeah. <laughs> Together, so slip it into a dime Quite easily, I might add. Let me slip it in. <laughs> <laughs> Got a bit stuck there. Apparently, she was on Nevermind the Buscocks the other day and doesn't look that different. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm sure it wasn't Leona Lewis. <laughs> yes, it was Linda Lewis. Anyway, uh, yeah, this track is Wise Eyes and it's lovely. Yeah, I tell you, every one of their albums has got something really nice on it. So uh, go and grab them because they're always fairly cheap, but they're well worth picking up. Isn't it lovely? It sounds yeah. like literally that album we played last year with that version of the Pitbull Count. Yeah, the Canadian lady. Yeah, I can't remember her name. Yeah, yeah. she was uh, it's a good album, that. She was gorgeous. Yeah, well. she's hot, man. Yeah, she does something crazy with her hair as well. I love like crazy hair. hair. <laughs> Talking of lovely ladies, my t-shirt, my Miles Davis t-shirt today. A beautiful woman called Vicky Jarvis got this for me. She's at the store because she's my girlfriend. Thank you, Vicky. So I'm wearing it, I'm wearing it but you can't see it. There you go. Okay, so Brad really is light. He's jumping up and down and the record isn't skipping. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, there's a 45 that came with it. There's like his little packs. She's got me a few of them. Bless her. Oh, she's so nice. But, um, yeah, so thank you. Wicked. Yeah, this sounds a little bit like Satisfaction when it first starts out. This is Jeff Beck Group. That album there. They're called Orange. Ice Cream Cakes is the track. Yeah. And yeah, I have to say, it's a good album. It really is. Obviously, Jeff. Jeff. Has uh, had a few breaks on his albums with that uh, yeah. come dancing uh, gangstar break and stuff, but I have to say this is and well the well. as well. That's right, that's right. He did, he did indeed. But uh, yeah, I'm really liking this one. Really, really good stuff. Yeah. So kind of nice. We've got a lovely 
Parker for? I do have to thank Mr. Graham Parker for this. On, on Facebook, I think it was last week or the week before, he said that he'd found this and he was really happy. And I was like, oh, I don't know what that is. And uh, people were talking about it and stuff, so I looked it up, heard it, fell in love with it, and got one myself. Uh, yeah, so I was a bit off the slow off the mark because I thought the Grand Park was on Facebook that he was he found the mighty gently was really happy. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, good no. luck to him. Good luck to him. And now he meant this 45. Yeah, the mighty gents. Yeah. And it's, it's a brilliant track. So I'm going to have to uh, say a big thank you to him for uh, putting me onto it because I didn't know about it before that. And uh, he does play out uh, in Brixton and uh, yeah. the surrounding areas quite often, so go and check out his, uh, his nights whenever he's playing, which is pretty often, so we'll try and pop some stuff up on our Facebook page. So, yeah, with, uh, with our main man, Mr. Hicks, as well. Lovely guys. Lovely guys. Lovely guys. Mighty gents. There you go, they are, they're mighty gents. Right, this next. Yeah. It's a... Uh, Tracks like this that make me go a little bit hard. <laughs> a little bit of distance between us. Yeah. Over here. <laughs> Get back here. <laughs> yeah, this is stunning. This is. Yeah. Brilliant. Vinyl Viagra for Chris. This is. Yeah. We've all got our own vinyl Viagra. It's the vinyl it it's, the, it's the strings in this that do it for me. I'm telling you. And the drums and vocals. Hello, this is uh, the Mighty Gents. The Mighty Gents, and it's 1978, so it's actually quite late, but it's just such a lovely track. It sounds lovely. Yeah. This came all the way from Australia. Yeah, that's, that's how I had to get it. There was no, none available anywhere else. So, so good. Mighty Gents, our man Lee Rouse of the Pump DJs, world famous Pump DJs, just been in Canada. That's right. And he just had a lovely kid. He is playing a 45 set. A 45 um, only set at, at the Blues Kitchen Blues in Shoreditch on the 22nd of January. Yeah. We'll definitely be there. We're going to be we'll there. Because uh, he's the loveliest guy in the world besides us. But yeah. uh, he really is. And, uh, you know, so. It was nice of him. He has actually uh, recruited us in his dance for the evening. That's right, yeah, exactly. So yeah. The format will probably be a little bit upset because he's lost his main dancers for a night. But Just for one night, Matt. It's okay. Night, Matt, Don't no mind that. That's yeah. right. But yeah, it's going to be a cracker, I reckon, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, be yeah. good. Yeah. I already know that a lot of people are going, so I'm definitely going, yeah. Totally. Benny King. Benny King. Benny King. So well, he's up next. Drift on to Benny King. I think so. Good luck. Still got it. Benny King from the Let Me Live Your Life album, and this is spoiled. So good. He's got one of the greatest voices ever, I think. Totally. I really love like his voice. It's so cool. Yeah. Yes. Full on white suits, towel, limo with some legs in the back. Oh, yeah. He knew how to roll. He did, man. It could only be 1978, couldn't it? <laughs> Yeah, great track. Great Yeah, it is, man. Cheap as chips are as well, this one. It is. So, the Napa um, beat tape that was on Mudge, it's a final vinyl. 15 only copies. It seems it's a double vinyl. They couldn't leave anything out. Double vinyl. I got one. I got one. He's got one. So next week we'll have it in the shed. We are on our way to... Uh, Tony Justice's studio this weekend. Yeah, the, uh, uh, the, the shed of all sheds. Yeah. Uh, Tony Justice's uh, immortal shed. Uh, yeah, we're going to pop there and uh, do some magic. Yeah, and, so uh, pick up we'll be out soon. Maybe that'll end up on fire. Yeah. Know, yeah. But the, um, I can't wait for that to come out. I've seen the artwork, it's fantastic. And, but I can't wait to get my hands on a bit of vinyl planet. Oh, no, so, so man. Yeah, so. Totally. Yeah, really looking forward to that. Yeah, and then Leon Riddard, our man Leon. Does the fantastic vinyl based artwork. He, do you see that he was looking for someone to he wants some pictures of hands? So he's got a fetish. He wants pictures of hands, but not need them. Oh, right, okay. For his artwork, I think. But the, um, Leon. But the, um, holding needles. Holding needles. He wants hands holding needles. Putting needles on records. So I'm going to take a photo of him tonight, so you should as well. Cool. I'll send it to him, and maybe we'll end up in artwork. Who knows? There you go. 
you go. Immortalised. It can be, it can be immortalised in art. That's it's wonderful. It's so, so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah, a bit of uh, overlooked and over slept on sort of old school hip hop, really. But uh, played it, like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, indeed. The sound of 1989. That's right. And this is the 12 by uh, Blackmail. And this is. Let's go. Let's go. It's a cracker. Sampling. Every track that you could think of under the sun. I think mean, there's a bit of Cheryl Lynn there, and there's Juice Catcher Groove, and I think that was uh, the rim shots of Dance Girl at the beginning as well. Ricky Boat. MCs have busy lives, you know what I'm saying? It's busting out records and rhymes, we're always playing it, creating a style, a freestyle. Me and Brad are actually doing the running man right now. Yes, we are. We're like Michael Flatley. Yes, the shop will be moving um, yeah. very soon, possibly next week, I think. Um, yeah. Is this got a gem coming out to it? I hope so. Um, he said he was. So, uh, yeah, you're going to have to get, uh, otherwise, everything's going to be all over the floor until you've got some shelves. Yeah, it's when it gets released, when it's over yeah so if you want to see the original shell as it was, to say I used to go to the first one, shop, sorry. <laughs> Come in. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, come down here over the, well, not this Wednesday. Not this Wednesday, because I ain't going to be there. I'm going to be in, I'm going to be in Boscombe. But Friday, uh, I'll be there and Saturday, so if anybody wants to come down and get some super, super discounted stuff, then... Uh, I'm definitely going in Saturday as well, so if you want to come there alone, I'll be there Saturday morning, 100%. Cool. Alright, anyway, anyway, so as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, our little, well, Christmas, um, he was going to drink two pints to see who would win that fantastic bit of artwork, uh, limited edition poster by Mr. Crump from the Snake Content album. Right. So I uh, went to a pub earlier today with him just to check, you know, me the office all right after Christmas, he gets a bit of a low sometimes, you know, there's nothing to do. And uh, he drank the two pints. We may have killed him. <laughs> we may have broken the elf. You know, there may be slightly less presents at Christmas next year. Sorry, One elf is broken. So, uh, we're going to go to that footage now. I can only apologise. Elf was hurt during the filming of this show. Uh, here we go. Okay. Uh, here we are with uh, our Christmas elf. Uh, as you know, regular watchers of the show, he's got to do the two pint challenge. Uh, the pints are sponsored by the Rebellion Brewery, as you can see there. Uh, what are they? Um, IPA. IPA. Yeah. Two pints of IPA uh, by Rebellion, a brewery based in Marlow, <laughs> sponsors of the show. And <laughs> <Seems to be. laughs> mentioned before in the past. Um, so, yeah, the, the challenge is whoever gets the closest guess to how long it takes them to drink these two pints wins that excellent um, statement of intent artwork by Mr. Crumb. Only 100 of those. Um, uh, the format album is brilliant. If you haven't got it, get it. Uh, we have our adjudicator here, Mr. Tim's, uh, ready to uh, ready to time the event. Uh, so I will start it. Ready, steady, go. All the excitement. There he goes. He's got a wide neck. He can down that pretty fast. Look at that. That is excellent work. My word. He's an uh, elf all seasons here. Oh, a little breather in between. <laughs> He has to drive home after this. <laughs> Are you impressed by his uh, work there, Mr. Sims? Yeah. Seen better. Seen better. Oh, he took a breather there at the three-quarter stage. Oh, 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 I'm worried the camera's going to get covered in this. <laughs> Absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with records here, other than the excellent artwork that we mentioned before is for the DJ format, Statement of Intent album. If you haven't got that, get it? All the foremost. <laughs> oh, he's struggling. He's struggling. A <laughs> oh no, is it coming back? No. Just... <laughs> oh. He has a little bit left in the first one as well. Oh, yeah. Quick. Hang on. Have ever got like a good over a minute? Uh, 
and we didn't cut that at all. There you go. He finishes for a time of... 1 minute 25. 1 minute 25 seconds. Uh, obviously, some of you Eagle Eye viewers out there will realise there was a bit of a gap there for some reason <laughs> or another. First point, 8 seconds. Second point, 1 minute 17 seconds. You know. Right, we better get out of here before they throw us out or make us clear up. Cheers. Well done, Lucas. The elf. Well done, Andy. The time. <laughs> that weren't pretty, was it? <laughs> Bless the poor fella, man. It's like... Anyway, 1 minute 25. You're not going to believe this, but the closest guest out of all the people that watch, and he's watching since the beginning, and he's obviously a good friend of us, and it seems a bit unfair, but it was our man Tony. Tony Justice, the man himself, he guessed at 128. The legend he, from Luton. The legend from Luton himself. Right, he nailed yeah. it. The, um, yeah, he absolutely spot on, but it's a little bit... I reckon he's been watching, he's a cute one. Because he's a cute one. The other week, yeah, Tony's a cute one. The other week we went to a rep, the independent record fair, and it was a beer fair, and the elf was with me. And Tony That's and the elf right. were drinking together, so I reckon he obviously, there was some skill in that, I guess. So congratulations, mate, that our work's on its way to you. I still haven't spoke to Matt about getting him to sign in much. Plus, if you still need one, there's a couple in the shop, so please don't. There you go, yes, there is. I don't know if Mr. Crump's got any left himself. But, more importantly, if you still want the album that it's based on, this album, which is just brilliant, man. It's just absolutely brilliant. Double album, statement of intent on Project Blue Book. This is also fantastic. This, we haven't played this yet, Source Power. It's right, we've played this yet. We've played quite a few of this as well early on in the, uh, in the uh, life of the show. We have indeed. It's now on its budget. Yeah. But this album is huge. It's a bit of a case, Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. It really shows the man off himself. And I'll work on this to put up with this thing. There you go. Yes. Wicked. We want some more from you, Matt. Yeah, we do. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah. Talking of great production, uh, the track we've got coming, the break of the week we've got coming up next. Well, is... we'll probably play a few of them because there's about four breaks on the album, so we might yeah. do a medley of breaks in a week. But you'll recognise one of them from Paul's Boutique. Oh, indeed. You know, so, yeah. So here we go. Oh, yeah. Shake your rump to this. Indeed, eh? Drummer and snakeskin bootwearer extraordinaire. Oh. You can't really see him, but he is wearing the best snake boots. Yeah. And this is uh, Alphonse Muzon and uh, Funky Snake Foot. And this track is Funky Snake Foot. Yeah, but this ain't the only break on the album. No, so let's flip to the next one. It's a good album, this. Except for when he sings. <laughs> yeah, he drums on all the tracks. He yeah, sings exactly. on a few of them, avoid that. Yeah, and um, yeah, his voice is uh, it's a bit weak. Drummer. It's a bit weak. He's no Phil Collins. <laughs> no, no, he's not. <laughs> anyway, this is lovely. Yeah, Blue Note from uh, 70 something. Three, let's say three. Yeah. Why not? Sounds like it. Anyway, I think there might be one more break than this. Yeah. 73. Produced by him as well. There you go. Anyway, so for our theme of the week, we've got a bit of a weird film. A nice trippy film called The People Next Door. And it's uh, Don Sebeski, who was on CTI, I believe. But, uh, yeah, there's a cracking little track on this. There's a couple of good tracks on this, but this one's called Maxi. So here we go with that. Um, full of hippies and uh, there's a nice uh, shot of a blonde lady snorting coke off a toilet with a long haired chap next to her. Judy Harris. Who's the music by? Uh, Dom Sebeski. Not a cop show, okay? No, it's a Christmas disappointment for us going to like, you know, it is a cop show.
show. Thank you to the elf. We apologise to his family. We, you know, you know we have, we have, after the, I think three or four days of this will be fine. Yeah. So, no problem, no problem. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll catch you next week. Bye bye.